Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another week of What You're Missing. And last week was E3, which you all know, or if you don't know, last week was E3, which is a large conference on video games down in L.A. I'm going to tell you a little bit about a lot of different things that I saw there. Um, most of the news out of last week were game announcements, so it's just going to be like game after game after game after game. And really, you're here because of me and the games, so this shouldn't bother you at all. Anyway, I'm going to jump right into it. Um, again, like I said at the very beginning, these are things that jump out to me. These are the things that I'm interested in. So if you don't hear me talk about something that you really loved, tell me in the comments. I'll go check it out, and maybe I can incorporate more of that sort of thing in the future. So bear with me, and I'm just going to get right to it. I know I talked last week and possibly even before then about The Last Guardian. E3 saw no news on The Last Guardian at all, no release dates, no no acknowledgments of any kind. There was no new The Last Guardian uh, anything. So that's five years of nothing. So I don't know. Do with that what you will. Uh, Nintendo apparently has a PlayStation 4 that, uh, that they released last week, a white one. The LA Times put in a very large picture on one of their pages that Nintendo's PlayStation 4 is debuting a white version. It's good to see that people are really journalism. Yeah. Um, Ubisoft is in the news um, for not having female characters. Now, this is both for Far Cry 4 and for their new Assassin's Creed game. Apparently, they looked into uh, having female playable characters for the multiplayer aspect, at very least, of the Assassin's Creed game, but they decided not to go with it, and now, and appropriately so, they're getting shit for it. So, they're, this is all I'm going to talk about Assassin's Creed, because it's literally an annualized game, which means that they're going to come out with a new one every year. So, last year was Black Flag, this year's is going to be Unity, and it looks like one of the things that they've added and updated is they're going to allow multiplayer in a way that they haven't before. Previously the multiplayer in Assassin's Creed games is shit. They like put you in a very small area and they make you hunt down things, but it's it's it never has the same feel as the rest of the game. It's just kind of this hacked out crap. Anyway, um, this one it looks like you may be able to do the campaign with three of your friends all at the same time going through story mode and all of that, so that would be really interesting. Unfortunately, if you're a woman, Ubisoft doesn't think that, uh, at least for their Assassin's Creed game and Far Cry 4, that, that you should be able to, to, to play a female. This is from the same, to be fair, this is from the same company that gave us Child of Light. Um, they have a lot of different developers. They've got Ubisoft Mon Montreal, which is who gave us Child of Light. Um, there was another game I think that I talked about last week that I don't, I want to say that they also, um, kind of had a little bit more forward thinking for the, uh, the whole sexism thing. So Ubisoft, get your shit together next year. Give us a female lead in the Assassin's Creed game. I mean, that's not totally outlandish and possibly female characters in multiplayer. It's not, it's not a huge order. Give it a try. Uh, and now just getting into game announcements specifically. That's really loud. I'm going to have to turn that off next time or put it in a drawer. I'm just going to put it in a drawer. So, um, uh, the first game that I stumbled upon was Bloodborne. Those of you that played, well, all right. So most recently, those of you who kind of are more familiar probably with Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2, they're known for being extremely difficult and very punishing. So they're the original game in all of those, sort of the, the spiritual parent, the genetic tree. I don't I don't know. I'm trying to come up with words that are not coming. So the original game that those all spawned from was Demon Souls. I played that way back in the day. It was free on PlayStation Plus for a while there. If you haven't played it, check it out. It's very hard, and probably, from what I've read, the best. I didn't go and play Dark Souls or Dark Souls 2 because I was defeated by Demon Souls, and you can only 
You can only take so much of getting your ass kicked by a video game before you're like, that's it? I can't take it anymore? No more! So, I quit, and uh, but not before terrorizing my roommate with it, who said, on multiple occasions, I would be sitting here playing, and in her room upstairs, this is in another place, but in her room upstairs, she could hear the heartbeat. There was a level that was centered around a huge heart in the middle of this dungeon. Everything was like pitch black. And she watched me play this for a couple hours, trying to find the heart and cut the chains that were binding the heart. And But throughout the whole level, you could just hear this faint, like, boom, 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 of the heart. And it would get louder as you got closer to the center of the dungeon where it was being held and it was quieter as you got further away. So, like, hours of just this, like, just subconscious, like, beating of a deep heart in the background. She said that she could hear that while she was trying to sleep, just like in the darkness, just this pum 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 pum. So after that, I, I I don't think I even got through that level. I I think I quit right in the middle of that, and I was like, the hell with it. But anyway, I digress. So Bloodborne, there's a whole complicated thing where Sony sold the rights to something. There was like IP involved, but they kept part of it and sold to, I don't know. So they're coming out with Bloodborne. It's the spiritual successor to Demon Souls. And I think it's, uh, honestly, as I'm talking about this, I realize I should have read up a lot more on it before talking about it. So I apologize for my ignorance. But um, if any of you know the story, I've, I've heard the people on IGN on their podcast talk about it. And I never thought to write it down. It doesn't really interest me enough like in the very specifics of who owns what and then who made what and went from there and did, you know, I, I don't know. It doesn't interest me as much as actually playing these games, so I spend my time doing that instead of instead of looking at all of the intricate details of that. Anyway, so Bloodborne came out, and I gotta say, watching the trailer for that, that was the only trailer of a video game, at least in the recent history that I can remember, that I thought that kind of grossed me out. It was just too gory. There was just too much... It was, it was really gritty and gory. So uh, check that out. For those of you who like that kind of game, this is definitely going to be up your aisle or alley. I don't think you go up an aisle. Well, you do, I guess, if you're grocery shopping. Anyway, again, I digress. So uh, Dragon Age Inquisition was displayed and demoed for us. And I played the original Dragon Age. I think it was Dragon Age Origins. I was very frustrated with it. I got, I think, like 75 or 60% through the game before quitting. I played a thief in that game as I do in, in all of these games, and you probably know this if you've been watching my new to gaming uh, segment or reading what I've been talking about on the blog. And so I played a thief in this game, and I found that I couldn't, I couldn't beat the game as a thief because... Now, granted, I think I left it on normal. I, I could have bumped it to easy, maybe. Maybe even I had it on easy, and I still wasn't able to do it. But there's this whole tank and healer mechanic, and then DPS or damage per second. And since I was the thief, I couldn't, I couldn't tank. I couldn't have everything attacking me because I just, you know, I'm wearing leather armor, and I'm not there for defense. Like I'm supposed to sneak up behind people and kill them. But when there's seven of them, you can only sneak up on one person, and then everybody else, yeah, and I. Nine times out of ten, they don't let you just outright kill that one person, even though that would be the more realistic thing. Uh, you have to, like, sneak up, you do some damage, and then it's a fight. It's like a fist fight. And if you're not a fighter, you know. So I had a healer, I had a fighter, and because I wasn't, they weren't the main character in the story, they weren't getting attacked. I was getting attacked, and they were in the background like, hey, look at me, attack me! And it wasn't working. Pissed me off. I went, like, way out of my way to get a healer which is there was like a, a temple you could visit. You'd pick up this woman and she would come and she would join your party as a healer. And I, I did that. It took a few hours and then I still couldn't do anything. And it at that point I quit. But uh, there's, there isn't a theme here. I usually play games all the way through. But a couple of these games I quit because they, they just seem broken. And I tell you this, not because I like hearing myself talk, but because Dragon Age Inquisition has taken a lot of that to heart. They really got lambasted by the Dragon Age 2 game that they came out with and so they fixed a lot of the issues that were in that game and 
or at least they're telling us this. It looks like it from the from the trailer, but uh, they fixed a lot of the issues from Dragon Age 2. They fixed a lot of the issues from the original Dragon Age, and the graphics just look beautiful. They showed a dragon fight, and you know I'm a sucker for dragons. I would show you my bookshelf where the vast majority of the books there are either about dragons or have dragons in them. And uh, yeah, so there's a fight with the dragon. It's really incredible to watch, especially if you look at the gameplay and the mechanics. So uh, check that out. Uncharted 4 was, we were given a little bit more information on. It includes Nathan Drake, which is the main character of the original three. And the trailer made me think that, or at least it gave the impression that this was either the last Uncharted that was going to be made or the last Uncharted with Nathan Drake. I would guess that it's going to be the last one with Nathan Drake, but not the last one overall, just because successful franchises, the companies that make them have a really hard time letting them go because it's all, it's like guaranteed money, right? So if you would be willing to give that up, I don't know. I mean, Naughty Dog is a wonderful studio. They're the company. They're the studio that brought us The Last of Us um, and the Uncharted games, which are are fantastic games. So I have faith that this one's going to be a great game. Maybe they will end it there, and they'll they'll put a real close to the series. It'll be interesting to see how that pans out. But uh, but there you go. Uh, another game that they that that Sony showed was called No Man's Sky. Now. Imagine if you will, this is going to be a little bit difficult to explain, but like it looked beautiful, but it wasn't because the graphics were just amazing graphics, but it was just a very vibrant game. And what the game was basically is you, I think, are a space explorer of sorts, but you're not exploring space so much as you are discovering and exploring planets. And on those planets, there are species, there's um phenomena so you can you fly your spaceship from literally from outer space down to the planet you hop out you run around the planet you discover different species that are on that planet and you get recognition for uh those discoveries i think it's sort of multiplayer in that your discoveries then daisy chain out into i don't know it looked like it we didn't see a whole lot but it looked like it it was multiplayer and possibly like an MMO in that all of your friends would would sort of exist within this same universe because they talk about how everyone starts on their own planet and so they are discovering like their own species and everything but the catch to the game is that you can seamlessly fly from the planet to space there are there spaceship battles on each planet, it's completely populated with flora and fauna, and it's all procedurally generated, which means that it's all random, right? So every planet that you discover will have various species on it, but the computer is making it up as it goes along, right? So as you see, as you find these places, they are literally going to be the the you know, maybe not all of the species are going to be unique, but some of them definitely will be on each planet. And so each planet is going to be its own specific ecosystem with purple skies or or green dirt or, you know, a completely water-based planet or, you know, anything like that. So it has, they keep saying that it is infinite, that this universe is infinite it, because it's procedurally generated and that it, it that the possibilities within it are infinite. So it's it remains to be seen how well it will be executed, what the social aspects of it will look like, if there are any, and uh, how recognition is passed along, and, and all of that. So it'll, it will keep your eye on this one, see how it unfolds. It really caught the eye of a lot of people, um, and it's, it's pretty inspiring. And No Man's Sky made me think that somebody over there might be a Firefly fan with the whole, you can't take the sky from me, but I don't know. Um, another game, Entwined. Uh, this is from Worldwide Studios, and it's a it's a small indie game, but it's it's based on a Chinese myth of a fish and a bird that fall in love, but are not able to be together because of 
fate, basically, right? Because one's a bird and one's a fish. And as you control them with both analog sticks, you basically go through the process of overcoming the circumstances of their lives and allowing them to unite. And their them joining together, at least in the myth and in this game, once they've overcome fate, they're able to be together and they come together and join and become a dragon. And then you, for part of the game, you're able to fly around and create light art of sorts um, with with your by flying as a dragon and sort of seeing the patterns that you make in the air and, and all of that. So that's a really cool game. I saw that in one of its earlier stages and it's it's a unique type of game. It's one of the games that I think I will probably go onto the PSN and buy. Whether I intend to play it for hours and hours and hours or not. As an adult, I was thinking about this earlier today. One of the really interesting and cool things about, I guess, being an adult and being a gamer is A, you can buy the games that you want to play, but B, that you can buy the games even if you don't necessarily think you're going to play a whole lot of it, just to support the developer, right? To support the idea and to support what they're doing. Like this is something new and unusual and I like I like the idea of giving your money to a company like that and saying, you know what? That's I I like what you're doing and I'm gonna support you and let's see what else you're able to do. So look at Entwined, check it out. Uh, next up is the division. Now this and Rainbow Six, though these two were uh, announced here and we saw a little bit of we saw a little bit of the division earlier, a few months ago, I think. But the division is kind of a combination of Destiny, GTA, The Last of Us, Battlefield. It's it's a it looks like a first person or not a first person shooter. It looks like a third person shooter. In I think the phrase was like an apoc apocalyptic, virus stricken New York City, and it's kind of bleak and dark but it's multiplayer and you're running around the city and I think trying to save people and bring order to chaos basically so it looks really cool there's a lot of really interesting and new mechanics like how the map when you look at the city map it lays out in front of you in the world that you're like in it doesn't you don't like stop looking at the world and you look at whatever and you see a map and you're completely oblivious to the world around you it like there's it's like a hologram that pops up on the floor and the ground around you and you can see where you're going and what you're doing and people can put you know waypoints for you in there and, and you can see it on the map and then boom you're off and running so it's a much more seamless seamless interaction looks really good it'll be interesting to see uh, how it goes and how story driven it is it, it the the trailer is very story driven it makes it feel like there's 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 a lot of story in that world but that kind of game often struggles with with having a story so um, yeah keep your eyes on the division rainbow six we only saw a little bit of it it looks like uh, six versus six multiplayer there's the scene we were shown was a kidnapping and the the police came in and tried to rescue the kid the uh, the hostage and they pretty much destroyed this woman's house completely in the attempt but it was a really cool gameplay in that there were fortifications that you could put up over doors and walls that you could once you had shot the wall there would be a hole in the wall that you could then like look through and shoot there were little drone bots that you could scurry under doors and it was all kinds of stuff so rainbow six it's very early on keep your eyes peeled look for more in that um, you're gonna having you're, you're gonna be peeling your eyes for a lot so I guess let's just assume that that's what you're going to be doing on all of these and all of the games that I'm not mentioning. Keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, I'm not going to say it anymore. So, um, we were shown little bits of a new Mass Effect. We weren't told very much about it, and uh, I don't know very much about it, but it I got the impression that maybe it wasn't with the original characters, but that you're on a different, you're in the same universe, but you're on a different, sort of in a different storyline in a different area. So, That'll be interesting. Um, one of the things that really caught my eye 
and I, I almost hate to admit this because I'm definitely, I, I really don't like Xbox for the most part. I've never had an Xbox. I've only played on one two or three times at a friend's house. But Microsoft is releasing a Halo Master Chief collection remastered for Xbox One, which means X, Halo 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are all coming out on Xbox One. And the entire campaign is co-op available and increasingly over the last year or two since I've met uh, a friend at Exasperate on Twitter. His name's Alex. I've been playing almost a lot of the games that I've been playing for the last year or so have been co-op with him. And it's 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 a lot more fun playing with another person. Granted, he's not big into MMOs, so I'm kind of on my own there, but um, this there's a lot of potential there and Halo really set up and set the standard for first person shooters. So it would be kind of interesting to see the story that that built up behind this franchise and to really go through it myself. So if I find myself with an Xbox One at some point, this is something that I'm definitely going to be checking out. There's another game that, um, shoot, I was going to write it down, but everybody's Sunset Overdrive. Everyone's really excited about it. I'm like, you know, it looks exciting and it looks interesting. It looks very much like Ratchet and Clank-esque because it's made by the same team that, that made that game. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to spend $500 on a console to play two games. So that's kind of where it's at. But check it out. Um, we saw, and kind of what was really exciting, was a, a snippet and a trailer for the new, a new Tomb Raider. The, they sort of rebooted the franchise with the most recent game. It came out on the PS3, came out on the PS4. It was a great game. It was real. It was gritty. Uh, the character, like in Uncharted 3, the, 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 Lara Croft really gets a beat down throughout this game, and she's just having a... A hard time, right? It's sort of young Lara. And it made you feel like you were human. It made you feel like you really related to this to this character. So I liked the game. It's it's exciting that there's a, another one coming out and I can't wait to see more. And lastly, because I know a lot of you play Nintendo, I am not a Nintendo guy. I I chose a PC when I was a little kid. My parents said look you can either have a Nintendo or you can have or you can play games on the PC you're not gonna do both and we're, we're not gonna pay for both but we can we'll go down one path and that's it and I they talked me into a PC I think because they wanted to get a, a computer and I was a little kid so I was easily impression uh, I was impressionable and I was easily convinced there you go so I went down the PC game route and I never really played many Nintendo games. I mean, I I got to play them at friends' houses or in college when they had it on the TV in the lounge. But but anyway, um, I digress again. But Mario Maker was announced, which is, if you really love Mario and if you like Nintendo, it's almost guaranteed that you do. Mario Maker is a tool to create your own Mario levels and like old school Mario too. None of this like 3D running around a globe picking up stars Mario. We're talking the original Mario. So you can do all kinds of crazy things with pipes and blocks and question mark cubes and mushrooms and whatever other drugs you want to take. So there you go. All right, well that's that's part 1 of this week's what you're missing. If I missed anything that you thought was just Oh, I had to, yeah, you got to know about this. You got to talk about it. Put it in the comments below, and I'll talk about it later this week. I'll write about it in the blog, or next Monday we'll, we'll have like a special segment on it. So tell me what you're thinking. Hit the button, subscribe if you haven't already. Tell your friends. If you've already told your friends, maybe don't do that again because nobody likes a nag. And uh, yeah, it's been great, and I'll see you next week.